because we got him. John Murphy is here. Assistant general manager, I think, is his title with the uh, Toronto Argonauts. Look at him in blue. You look gorgeous in blue. Murph, how you doing, my friend? How you guys doing out there? Good, good, good. But where are you in New Orleans? You in Toronto? Where are you today? No, I'm actually in the office, so uh, not enjoying uh, any kind of good weather. So <laughs> it's good to be in the office, though. Get a lot done. Yeah, no kidding. Murph, did you hear the discussion about Zach? I mean, if he was this healthy to, to take a team to a great cup, why wasn't he playing in Toronto? Do you want to jump right in? I mean, you were there all of a day, I, I think, before he was traded away. But how would you answer that? Yeah, I think, you know, the circumstances of knowing everything that was going on uh, leading up to that timetable and time frame, also looking at, you know, at this time, you know, at that time of the season, why Winnipeg engages, uh, you know, at that time and place to want to acquire a veteran quarterback uh, to either do what he's done, which is terrific, or just to be there behind Strebler in case something happened. In this dynamic um, at that time, you're dealing with the likelihood that a rookie or non-experienced running back would have to be playing down the stretch. Uh, there were at least one, if not multiple, receiver changes that were going to occur because of injury. Uh, and free agency coming up pending for four out of the five starting receivers. Uh, and then you had some O-line changes that were happening because of injury. To think that you could put Caleros in that setting here and get an accurate read of what kind of player he could or was going to be versus going to Winnipeg in a style of offense he's played in before. Andrew Harris, uh, an O-line that's played together most of the season uh, outside of the injury to the center that's occurred in the last few weeks. Uh, and then a receiving core that, again, had no changes, was in there. You know, that was their group. Uh, they had gotten Darwin Adams back. I think it would have been an unfair evaluation of Zach to believe that if he had come into this situation and played down the stretch, you would have an accurate read of him. And then having an opportunity to have Winnipeg literally at the trade deadline offer up the idea that they would trade two draft picks for a guy who had not played since week one of the regular season, including one of them potentially being a first round pick. Yeah, that's that was just too much to pass up on, you know, like you said, with basically 36 hours between uh, when we arrived and had a press conference about uh, taking over job positions and having a trade trade deadline then later on that week at 5 p.m. on a Wednesday. Go ahead, Smitty. Hey, it's Craig Smith here. How you doing, man? Excellent. How are you feeling, buddy? Been doing good, getting better. Just wondering if you're hiring. I'm, 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 almost, I'm getting better, and I'm almost <laughs> close. But uh, didn't take long, Murph. Didn't yeah, take long. Yeah. But uh, one of the things, like, okay, so what's your plan of attack with regards to the Argos? Like, where are you going to concentrate on getting better, and in, 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 in the off season? Well, I think the good news is there's uh, there's plenty of areas to concentrate on getting better uh, in all aspects of of the uh, organization and with the team. And then uh, the exciting thing is. Once again, because of the CBA situation in the past 12 months, literally 70% of the CFL are pending free agents. So the good news is, you know, uh, if you don't like things or you reevaluate re things and want to move, you know, some things around and change where you invest your time and your money and your assets, uh, that's definitely going to be available this offseason. So I think going back and having had the chance to uh, rewatch about two thirds of the season, you know, as of today and uh, continuing to evaluate our own roster and our neg list and then kind of some of the things that went on and why did they not work. Uh, I, I think those are the first questions we want to have answered uh, and then turning into January when we can do some more on hand, you know, kind of scouting on our own and get out, you know, get out in the market, uh, start seeing what will present itself to us to improve. Murph, great cup week. Tell us what you see, buddy, <laughs> between the matchup. Uh, you know what, uh, having, having played Hamilton, you know, three times, beginning, middle, and end of the season, uh, you saw a team that was able to withstand a lot of the things that other clubs, including ourselves, were not, right? Their, their injuries, not only with Mazzoli, but playing three or four different running backs. Uh, Cam Marshall coming in and playing two games down the stretch, you know, the way he has. Developing Braylon Addison uh, the way that he's gone in there, fortifying their old line the last two years. Uh, with their draft picks and then the uh, great addition of Van Zyl to, you know, to their mix when he became available financially. You know, I think you look at it and you say, you know, they, they've given you an idea of a blueprint of what to do. Two quarterbacks, developing a, a young guy behind a vet, adding a guy like Chris, you know, improving their pass rush, and that's where they developed it. They put young guys at DB next to Delvin Bro, and they've all, you know, turned out very well 
uh, been able to move some of those guys then into premier positions like Richard Leonard, you know, has gone to having a vet like Rico at Sam. You know, I think you look at them and say, hey, there's there's really not a place there where you see a, a, a direct hole in their game. It's really going to be the question again. Dane Evans, now it's not the first time playing in a playoff game. Next week it's in the winner go home, Grey Cup environment versus Caleros and a little bit more of a veteran group that they have there in Winnipeg. And this is this is Winnipeg's, you know, sort of uh, opportunity, right? They've, they've built this up for five or six years and now here they are in uh, in that moment. So I think that's a seems like a very four quarter competitive game. Uh, it seems like there'll be a lot of exciting things. You know, two teams that like to kind of give you the gadget play on offense and special teams. So I'm sure there could be some unique things that we see next week, depending on down distance and situation or scenario. But I would not be surprised to to have kind of one of those instant classics in terms of you know final three minutes of the game. This is still going to be up in question who gonna. Who comes out as the winner of the Grey Cup, and that's great for our league. Murph, how are you feeling at quarterback? You had some, uh, you know, uh, Bethel Thompson, you know, certainly did some good things for you. Um, uh, you, you know, the Prukop went in and, and, and did the same thing. Um, how, how are you feeling? Uh, are you figure of some of those guys will be back competing. Uh, you know, what's your thoughts? Yeah, I think, you know, the one that you left out there is uh, Franklin. the development that you saw out of Mike O'Connor. Yeah. You know, oh, from, I love from that first- kid. You know, from the preseason game when he jumped into the action, you know, to responding after he threw an interception in the preseason, uh, the way the kid works, the the hours he puts in, you know, while he's the number three, he's putting the hours in as if he is a starter, uh, and then getting a chance to to see him develop and play down the stretch, uh, gives you the idea that you know next season could be that, you know, that step forward to be competing as the number two. Uh, I think you know with the stats and the things that you saw. You still have to come out and say the the bottom line is you throw for 300 plus yards in 10 games and you go two and eight. That's where you have to start, you know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, kind of start and finish when you're talking about quarterbacks, right? Because nobody cares about yards, nobody cares about touchdowns and thousand yard, you know, receiving seasons. What people care about is victories. Uh, so I think you have to go back and watch those games very carefully and make a decision on, you know, what was it that didn't go right? Because if you're throwing for 300 yards in 10 games and in those games you complete nearly 70 percent and you have a tur- plus turnover ratio of two and a half to one but yet you were two and eight you really have to look at it and say you know what what really went wrong in those games because if you go two and eight in those games what would your expectation be what you could do in the other eight games you know in a season so i think it's it's a little too soon to say what do we have uh it, it's easier to say like you know hey there's a lot of areas for improvement, and it all was not on the quarterback. Uh, Producer Clark's got a question for you, Murph, and it's a good one. It's about wondering if we should ask John about his influence on the Ryder roster and how he feels about their season. Kind of feeds into Saturday night. I was at a banquet in Paradise Hill, Saskatchewan, five hours north of here, and they said, is this Jones and Murphy's team? And I said, you know, in 07, we were asked, was it Shivers' team when Eric Tillman won, right? Like, it doesn't really matter if the Riders win a great, were to win a great cup, you guys wouldn't have got a ring. Like, but, have, but beyond that, you did have a huge hand in putting it together. So did you have some tug at the heart with the guys that you put together out there on the field? Well, I think first and foremost, that's, that's Craig and Jeremy's team or Jeremy and Craig's team, you know, regardless uh, of what anybody else wants to say. And it would be uh, terrible to take any credit away from what those guys did in the past 12 months and where they got that team to last night. Uh, I, I think you're always, you know, I was just as satisfied when Winnipeg had an opportunity to, to go to the Grey Cup two years after being there because some of the work and uh, hours you put in, you know, led to to them then having future success. And I think it's, you know, the same thing there. And, you know, that's why they built that stadium was for days like yesterday. And, you know, you want the outcome to be different, you know, for everybody out there. Um, you know, the last two years, it just hasn't it just hasn't happened in that moment. But, I mean, they're doing everything they can to put that organization in the right place for moments like yesterday to keep occurring. Uh, and then, hey, you know, every once in a while, if you keep getting there, eventually, you you know, you'll get a W. But the work and, and what the hours and, and knowing how much time those guys have put in from last December when, you know, when we were coming off that loss to Winnipeg to, to yesterday, uh, you know, Jeremy and Craig and, and Craig Reynolds and Wayne and those guys deserve a lot of credit for being able to repeat that and even do better 
uh, and get one step closer, literally one step closer to where they want to all be. Well said, Murph. Well, I appreciate the time. Glad we could finally hook up. I hope we can do it a few times here through the off season. And I miss you, buddy. Keep in touch. And uh, glad to Excellent. see that you're Thanks doing so well. Thanks so much. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, thanks Murph. so much. Hey, Craig. Great, great seeing you there, Craig. And uh, we're all glad that you're doing and feeling a lot better. And uh, you know, good luck to you and your family. And I'm sure I'll be able to see you sooner than later. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. And best of luck in the off season. Thanks, sir. Before we go to break, Smitty, you must have been facetious when you said, are you hiring? Because I know you're turning down jobs. All of a sudden, you're asking for jobs. Where are you? Are you, <laughs> are you ready to work or not? I'm getting there. I'm, you're close, I'm, huh? I'm getting closer. I can closer. tell. I yeah. can feel the P and V coming off you. Yeah. And, yeah, and it kills me. It kills me. Like we were talking at breakfast today, you know, I was sitting there. Jesus, I miss it. I miss being with the team. I miss, Even if you lose, you know, it's just... It's the journey, and it's such a great thing. And, you know, and when you win, like 2013 was one of the best days. I, 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 elation and Rider Nation. Who said that? <laughs> I don't know. A very <laughs> smart guy. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, yeah man, it was – and you, you've been there, Benny, and it, yeah. it's just an incredible thing. We both we – were, we were on the two, 20, 2014 that lost to Toronto. And, you know, I mean, we drowned our sorrows, and it was tough. But, you know, when you win, it's something special. Nothing like it. Nothing like CFL football. Nothing like playoff football and the opportunity to be part of something special. Yeah. What did he say again? What's he famous for? Elation, Elation and Rider Nation. Rider Nation. That's wow. when we won. That was won. 2013. Sweet. Wasn't that, that, <laughs> yeah. I like that one. Isn't that, you guys got lucky. You got past the uh, semifinal. That team in the semifinal played you a lot better. It's just Dar- Darian pull, pulled a couple plays off. That's all. I got lucky. It, got lucky. Because that team, I, that t- you guys shouldn't have got past the semi. Come I, on. I had to change my shorts in that game, I'll tell you, because it was unreal. 18 17. Yeah. Hey, you know what was a good thing was Darian Durant dropping back and making those runs, and it was just what All right. Uh, what this, this is where we cut it off. Cut it off and, right there. No, 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 no. Yeah. That's enough. That's enough. No, it was so good. Yeah. It was unreal. Yeah. You're watching Rod Peterson on demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.